Well, at the time of this interview, there was 84 days left before the nation decides if the UK remains or leaves the European Union. Well, Project Fear has touched on emotive subjects such as job security, holidays to Costa del Sol, expat living, the security of gas and energy supplies in the UK, our favourite football players being permanently given the red card. And get this, the word Brexit has been banned by the Bank of America. But how is this affecting not just the big and now silent investment banks, but the small caps? Well, joining me now is Dennis de Jong, who is the managing director at Forex trading platform UFX. So first of all, Dennis, the security of gas and energy supplies to the UK. Earlier, I spoke to Simon, uh, Steve Bowler, who's the chief executive of iGas. And he was saying that if we leave, the conventional and unconventional um, gas and oil suppliers would actually be beneficiaries and the shale producers would win the hearts and minds of local planning authorities and communities. Do you agree? In to a great extent, yes, I definitely agree with that. And it's an interesting factor you're going to be having here because you'll be looking after Britain's oil and gas needs and you will be able to source those oil and gas needs directly from the UK or from the surrounding countries. Oh, territory, sorry. So, I mean, that's, that's oil and gas, but which other sectors, you know, would have exposure to an exit uh, from the EU? I can imagine that with such a diverse in, in employment base, it would be quite a few. Well, in, uh, actually, there will be all of the sectors will be affected because uh, your, your trade, your, most of your trades are with the EU. And if you look at the exporting uh, countries, uh, traditionally, it's always Germany, your highest exporting country within the EU. Of course, US is a bit higher than that. And you would also be looking at France, Netherlands. Um, so all of the sectors will be affected. The question for me is, are there any sectors which could benefit from a Brexit or which are more likely to lose out of uh, having a Brexit? Well, that's what I would like to know. Which sectors would indeed benefit if we left? So I would say that uh, the UK has done, undergone great efforts to position itself uh, at the top of innovation. Uh, in this re respect, I would definitely highlight the uh, uh, whole fintech movement because you've got a very strong financial basis uh, in, in London already and uh, I'm sure you could uh, capitalize on that and it would give the UK more freedom to act and impose laws of what they want without taking into consideration what the, what the EU thinks or what other competing countries might think. Uh, in addition to that, I would say anything related to IT uh, specifically, if you're thinking about the uh, cloud services which have been introduced and which are more and more coming, where it really doesn't matter where you're sitting, it's more about where the knowledge is and uh, being able to outsource more fleet to other countries, for example, uh, to, to India or to China, just for programming tasks, which are already doing very well. It will also benefit uh, encouraging having more knowledge in the UK and being able to grow ideas from here. Okay, so you've mentioned two beneficiaries so far, the UK oil and gas sector and the incubators of, you know, fintech, disruptive technology success. Which sectors do you anticipate um, will, will struggle and they'll have to adapt and amend their core business model? Well, I would see here, mainly see here the production sector, which already in the in the last few years it's lagging anyways a little bit i mean if you if you compare it to the services sector which has increased uh, the output already it's, it's growing quite well again the production sector is lagging i would i definitely see them struggling more now you are a currency expert so let's have a look about um the 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 knock on impact to the mm -hmm. pound um there's a strong assumption that if we say yes to leaving that the initial impact would be a devaluation of the pound. So how would that impact mm -hmm. some companies' balance sheets if that assumption were true? <laughs> no, okay. I think at the moment it's too early to make a call on what's going to happen after a potential Brexit or not. So I cannot make it, give you a long-term trend at the moment. But what is for sure if that, uh, that we would see from the current perspective if the UK decides to exit uh, the, the EU, there might be pressure and the, the pound appreciating, which will in turn not be good and will be again putting more pressure on the production sector to be able to increase exports. Okay, so it's too early for you to make a call. But the markets don't like uncertainty. So here we are at the end of the first quarter. How has the pound behaved 
in the first quarter, say, compared to the euro and the US dollar? Well, I would say that uh, the, the uncertainty, it's always re reflected in volatility. And what, we're going, what we have seen mostly of this year and also going forward the next three months is that there's going to be more volatility. We would see some range-bound trading continuing, but uh, volatility will, be, will remain until there's at the actual vote. And there's also the issue here with the vote, because if you look at, uh, at polls or at even at, at bookmakers, it's still very, fairly balanced. So even there you cannot, uh, we don't feel comfortable advising people on, okay, you could look at it this way, that it might be a yes or a no, because it's just not, it's not sure yet. Because I was going to ask you if you were a betting man and who you would <laughs> place, you know, which decision you would place your odds on. It's still a 50-50, I would say. That's a it's terribly say. diplomatic answer. I can't draw you, obviously. But, you know, in the, the run-up, therefore, because as I said in my introduction, there are 84 days left before we go to the polls. You know, is the Brexit resulting in subdued stock market trading? Is it encouraging companies to put their strategies on hold? Are customers delaying placing orders whilst the debate continues? I think you're absolutely right. I mean, there's on one side there are customers which are waiting to delay orders and as well there are companies which are delaying to make investments. And the reason for it being especially for smaller mid-cap stocks is they don't have the flexibility to, to diversify their investments globally. So really their investment decisions and their capital expenditure decisions will be related to the UK. So any, any influence or any effect from the Brexit scenario will have a large influence on, on their decision. So Dennis, let's get into our time machines. Let's project ourselves 85 days ahead and Britain has voted to leave the EU. What would this mean for the European Union? One piece has now elected democratically to leave. Would it set a precedent and would other countries then have their own Brexit style of referendums? Now, being from the other side of the channel from the EU and uh, having lived also in the UK as well in several European countries, First of all, I would say it's a pity. It's a real pity from the European countries to see uh, Britain haven't taken that decision. Nevertheless, it will have to be respected. And I do sincerely hope it will not be a, a, pre a precedence for many other countries to leave because at the end, if we, if we wind back to the 50s where the EU was set up as a coaling and mining association and it started very small, we've come a very long way. And of course, there were many difficulties on the way and we've overcome all of them. And uh, seeing a, a strong partner, not only economically or trade-wise, but also um, you know, politically-wise, like, like the UK leave the EU or deciding to leave the EU, it's a pity for, I think, the whole project of the European Union. Okay, so you're obviously not London born and bred. You're obviously not a local. What if we decided that you had to go home? Would you leave? I actually don't live in the UK, <laughs> but I enjoyed my, my time that I lived while, whilst I was living in the UK. And I've made many friends here. Okay, very good answer. So, uh, well, what if we invited you to stay permanently, would you? I would come back, of course. <laughs> Thank you very I've much. I've had a great time, yeah. <laughs> Dennis de Jong, Managing Director at Forex Trading Platform, UFX. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much.